Hello and welcome, well, not to a blender tasty tutorial, but rather a marvelous tutorial one. Yeah, I actually do some stuff in marvelous from time to time. I made a tutorial about a puffed back. So today we can take a look at how to make this puffed back in marvelous designer. If any of you have the software, as always, drop a like, leave a comment. I always enjoy those and subscribe to the channel because it really helps me out a lot. So yeah, let's get into the video. Okay, so it feels weird to say, but I've opened Marvelous Designer <laughs> this time. So we're gonna start by creating a rectangle, a shortcut S as well. I'm just gonna click and drag, hold shift, and I'm gonna drag it to about a length of 500, about 500. Uh, with the Q, I can just move it on the Y like that. So first of all, I'm just going to do all of the components of the bag. The original was a bit of a extended type of bag. This one, I'm just going to make it super square. So the way I would go about this is it can get annoying to sew in Marvelous at some point. But in this case, we're just going to make it way easier on us. So I'm going to choose the polygon mode right here and just create a sort of a rectangular shape right here. I'm not being extremely exact with the measurements. I'm just going to grab these elements, control C and then control V and just paste it on the other side and then control C, control V and paste this bad boy down here. Rotate it. If I hold shift, it actually locks it at a 90 degree angle. So we get this type of structure. This guy, I can also just grab like that and rotate it for 90 degrees. And they just move the guys into position so that they're nice and straight like that. Now, the next part is going to be to do the back side. So the side that is going to be on this part right here. So I'm just going to grab the initial rectangle, control C and then control R to paste it like that. And then just rotate it again and move it back. So it's like that. Maybe we could also rotate these guys into place. So I just select them, hold the shift key and then moving them on the Z like that and then rotating again and just rotating them and positioning them to be sewn a bit later on. Something like that. And then this one as well, holding shift, holding back like that. On the top, I'm just going to make like a cut. So this is going to be a cut in between. Basically, it's going to be the same length as this. So control C, and I'm just going to pop this bad boy here, rotate it again, and just pull it down. And then I'm going to choose with a Z, the shortcut, just choose this line and drop it down. And basically dropping it down, I can also hold shift. I just want to have the distance sort of like that, because this is actually going to get sewn and hold the zipper. So let me just rotate that, rotate this as well, drag it like that. Uh, let me rotate it on the X again, so it's nice and flush with that point. And now I can just, again, grab this bad boy, control C and then control V again, paste it right there. And then I can just, maybe I can just leave it like that, perfectly fine. And I'm gonna rotate it in the 3D window like that position it down, pop it like this. So I'm just going to make the arm straps, the arm straps again, I'm just going to grab the polygon and then start at this junction right here, make it the same width as the actual bag and create it like that. Maybe it's going to be too long, but we also always can adjust this stuff a bit later. So I'm just pressing shift and then correcting everything. Let me move this bad boy nice and slow into position like that. And I can again choose the, what is this? The transform pattern, control C and then control V and just paste it on the other side like that. So I have this type of structure. Now this one is flipped. So I just have to rotate it like that. And then again, make it work with the rest. Kind of like that. that. That's the basic idea. We're going to work on these just a bit more. Uh, probably we'll do a bunch of duplicates. Now, the way to create the puffed effect is actually to first sew this stuff so we can see what type of this shape is going to take. So in both menus, the 2D pattern menu and also the 3D pattern menu, I'm going to choose this sewing, the segment sewing, so I can see what I'm actually sewing. 
bear in mind you need to make sure where this little tick is if you're a complete beginner so that you don't get like this crossed stitch but you get it like that so it's nicely and neatly sewn and i just go around the whole object and just sew the lines that are important for what we need sort of like that i'm making sure that everything is nice and tied together so that we don't have any places that are gonna just go their own way sort of like that like that i can also connect the straps so i'm connecting the straps to the side of the bag and then the top of the bag as well i'm just making sure that it's not going to cross these guys are going to be a bit more difficult because here we're going to use the free edit type of uh, approach but let's just for now try how they sew together right now I'm going to choose the fast, so the GPU, so it renders out with the GPU, like that. So this is the sort of the shape of the bag. What I want to have is these guys kind of meld with this part, so right at the strap. With the free sewing, we're going to sew these segments together, and these are going to be basically the kind of the mouth of the strap, if you want to say like that, and then the straps themselves. So I just want to find where my spot is. You can follow the blue dot to find the exact one. And then I'm just choosing one of these sides. So this is going to be the other side. And then there's a blue dot right here that actually tells you where your stitch is going to end. So we can just very precisely say, aha, okay, that's where you're going to sew it. Okay, so let's try the other one. So the other one is again, it's flipped and we just put it right here so now these guys are going to go together and we just repeat the step for the other side marvelous usually it gets a bit difficult with sewing but i don't know once you get the hang of it it's kind of fun to just mess around and figure out how to make sewing lines work for you so like that if i press space to simulate you can see that our parts have conjoined together. They are now formed. This is going to be, this is basically done because we want to make that zipper work for us as well. Okay, so now it's time to create the puffed effect. And we're going to do that by choosing the edit pattern. And then we're going to choose the top sides of our patterns like that. Just the bottom one, like the bottom slit, I'm just going to choose it from the other side like that by holding shift so I have everything selected and then I right click offset as internal line and I choose a number of offsets of six in my case and a distance of 70 millimeters and that's going to create these sort of nice squares on the side before you leave these guys I would suggest that you click elastic and that's actually going to make those lines elastic so they are going to contract while we're going to set up the fabric to kind of puff up and that's going to create that effect so i want to make the squares on the bigger sides of the thing so i just choose these two sides offset this internal line again and again i just click ok with 70 millimeters and the number of offsets of six like that created them again choose the elastic so we have that elastic effect and now i can just press the simulation you can see that it simulated the garment pretty well let me just try and pull it on. So now it looks like this. It doesn't look puffed yet because it's very simple. We're just going to choose the lines that we need to puff up. So this is every single piece of this cut that has these lines. And I choose the pressure, let's say, of three. I'm just going to do that. And now if I start the simulation, you can see that our little bag is nice and puffed like so. So this is how it looks right now. It's a very simple concept. You can have a bunch of fun with it uh, as well as when you increase the number of the particle distance or rather decrease, let's say to something like 10, for example, and we press play, these start to get way more pronounced. And you can apply this to all types of things. You can make a shirt like that. You can make like a puffed parka like that. All types of objects and hats and stuff increase the pressure to have a bit of fun something like that you can also exaggerate it uh, usually what i would do with this it's also add a zipper now this is the 
perfect opening for the zipper. We can very precisely see what's going on right here. Let me just extend this kind of like that. So what I want to do is connect these two dots, lines that we have connected. And I just choose this zipper tool. The way it works, you just go to one junction like that. And then you follow the line until the final junction or where you want to have this conjoined line to start. I want to have it there. I just double click and then I start from the same spot, sort of kind of there, and then drag it to the end on the other side. So it joins, double click, and that's going to create the zipper. Boom, it closed. And now we have our little zipper done. So here you'll notice that this stuff starts to float. So you might have to adjust a bit your pressure and weft and shrinkage settings. You can see here we have our zipper nice and ready. Now for the pressure, again, we can just transform, choose all of the size that we were transforming like that. We can drop the pressure, let's say, I don't know, to three or something. So it's again, stable and stays where it stays. And now we can increase the shrinkage weft and warp to larger numbers, and it should have an even bigger puffed effect. So let's say shrinkage weft to 150 and shrinkage warp to 150 as well. So this basically just adds a bit more elasticity to the garment. Let me try to go just with the fast GPU because it usually just, it doesn't have very good collisions, but usually you can just demonstrate stuff a bit easier. But essentially, yeah, like this is, this is the trick I use to create the puffed shirt effect. So yeah, this is like a off the cuff type of uh, tutorial. I don't always do everything in Blender. I tend to jump between programs, between all sorts of stuff. Um, but yeah, let me know if you're interested in learning a bit more about these workflows, even if it's just uh, watching how something is done. Maybe it's going to interest you and inspire you to try something like that on your own. In any case, don't forget to drop a like, leave a comment. I always appreciate those. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.